Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger, what up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe. While we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to Geek Enders. Yeah. Hello. It's us. We're back again. We're back with a lovely guest. Uh, today we have Charlie, who uh, has been around forever, been around on YouTube, done screenwriting and music, and is just generally a very lovely person that I'm delighted to be friends with now. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Um, yes, I am. I am really old in <laughs> internet. Yes, <laughs> doing this. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. A no, very I'm long old. time. So old. <laughs> <laughs> You're in good company. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about old. I'm. I, I already had this conversation yesterday. I had a conversation where uh, a guy was like, "God, I'm so old." Like I've just been doing this too long. I've been doing this 15 years, and I that I understand. Like mm -hmm. when you're when you do this kind of stuff, and then he's like, "Just turned 35," and I was like, "Cool, <laughs> bro, cool." <laughs> so happy for you. I like that. I like how often uh, you complain about uh, people that are younger than you, but you will never say how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm I'm very old. I'm like I was old when this world was young. I am I am I've watched from the shadows mm -hmm. as civilizations have risen and fall. I have seen men reach for the stars and also plummet. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I don't know. I don't know what else Cthulhu esque things I can say. <laughs> uh, I got be like uh, you like thirty six. Is that about right? <laughs> God, I wish I that would be joyful. That's me. No, no. <laughs> well, I've I rock I, that I, '80s baby stuff. I'm yeah. I'm not even sure. I used to think I knew how old Jesse was, and but he waxes poetic about being an old man so often that now I've mm -hmm. I've questioned mm -hmm. it, and I'm just not sure anymore. I would love it if th this was the greatest con I've ever pulled, <laughs> and I was like a rough twenty-five, <laughs> just like. Yeah, uh, I'm 25, living my life. What can I say? I Just well, graduated high school, high college, graduated college. <laughs> Do people even graduate 25? I did. I like. Uh, I took a few extra years to figure out my major. Of course, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think regardless of how old you actually are, it is simply just fun to say that you are old and to sort of complain about it. Oh, yeah. exactly. And then, uh, and then the older you get, the more that you get to look at people who are younger than you who say that they're old, and then you can go no, and then you can do the extra complaint on top of that. So mm -hmm. that's um, sometimes that's really it just what feels it's all good about. to get that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. No, it does. <laughs> before um, although... Jesse, before you showed up, Charlie and I were talking about uh, how um, basically anytime you have a conversation with somebody who lives in LA or is in LA, they'll be like the traffic. Am I right? And the, com the complaint trajectory is always about how long it took you to get somewhere, what the traffic was like on the way there. There's, there's always a part of the conversation that's about that, which I think is very accurate. <laughs> it is true. I did this past weekend, by the way, LA is a trip, man. Um, <laughs> this past weekend, Dear sweet friend Michelle Morrow, uh, by the way, who I just discovered hilariously is named after apparently in North Carolina, there is a 
cuckoo bananas politician running for some type of political office named Michelle Morrow. And the things she says are insane. And my friend is getting all the messages like, how dare you? You're disgusting. You're one of the worst no. people in the world. He's like, I'm not that person. Which makes it even more funny. So I just want to shout out because that's hilarious. But anyway, she had a birthday. And it was mm-hmm. up in somewhere past Hollywood. And I, she was like, I can't believe you came. That's And the reason why is because I had to take the 405 to the 10 to the 110 to the 2 in order to get to her. It took an hour and a half. I was stuck in traffic. And she's like, I can't believe you came here. That's great. I'm like, it's your birthday. Of course I would. It was at a barcade. It was amazing. And the people who were there at this barcade were like, celebrities it was wild it was a weird place to be at the time where i was like should i i don't feel cool enough to be in this room <laughs> i know i drove for an hour and a half but i could drive yeah. an hour and a half more <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> there's been times there's there's one time many years ago that i went to some event and i drove it was in downtown la and i got stuck in traffic for two hours and when i got there i couldn't find parking and my first thought was F it, I'd rather go home. But I stuck around, but I really was just like, I'd rather just drive two hours back. Like, this is the worst, this is intolerable. I've had the worst day. It's Los Angeles, that's what it is. It's, it's sometimes you're like, should have taken an Uber. But then it's like, now I'm paying to wait in traffic. It's, yeah. Is, um, cause again, I've never been to Toronto. Is Toronto like really densely packed as a city or no? Is it, is it more spread out? Um, I mean, it's definitely not like Los Angeles mm. spread out, you know. Um, I mean, there is the like the greater Toronto area, but mostly when I think of Toronto, I think of like the sort of the the downtown sort of like area and just like a bit a bit around that. Mm. And that is like it's it's not too difficult to get around. We have public public transport here. It's pretty mediocre, <laughs> especially because oh, no. I used to live in London and like public transport in London is it's just so so good yeah and so so easy um but you know it's uh it's fine it's just a sort of like a normal it's a normal city <laughs> I have nothing I always there's, there's, I guess uh, not sort of any real defining characteristics about it right I always imagine it very um is I I grew up in Oregon so um like with the sort of Pacific Northwest sort of cities like Portland and Seattle and stuff. And I always imagined Toronto as basically just Portland, but I have no idea Toronto's if that's like accurate at all. Nice though. <laughs> Every time I've been to Toronto, when I went to school, I went to school in Western New York. And so, you know, at 19, Canada's like paradise, right? Cause in the States you gotta be 21 to do anything. And you just go right across the border and you're like, hello. So we go to Niagara and, Toronto was the biggest city near us, so we just go to Toronto all the time. It's sign- – I vividly remember my first impression is driving through a tunnel, and there there wasn't – I didn't see spray paint anywhere. And what I did see was a man sweeping the tunnel, and I was like, what is this? What kind of magic is this? They're taking care of this place? So that's my vibe is mm-hmm. Toronto, sure, it might just be a city like any other, but I feel like people care about it a little bit more mm-hmm. than most U.S. cities. This <laughs> the vibe I got. Gotcha. I remember thinking this is a lot like New York, but it's clean and the people are nicer. That's oh. the yeah, that's the vibe. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was mostly what I what I felt. Okay, and I mean, yeah. I a lot of people in Canada will think that the people in Toronto are really mean. Really? But, yeah, but like coming from again, coming from London, like everybody here is delightful in comparison right. everybody there is so so grumpy uh, all the time yes. it's like the chance that you're going to interact with a stranger in a positive way is like next to none it happened to me like 10 years living there or whatever maybe once or twice but um yeah the people here uh well i don't know i just like it that's a part of, a big part of the reason i wanted to move here initially was just that it's um it's just it's just got a very nice comfortable vibe for me just sort of like as a person yeah I guess it it entirely depends on what's like your warmth base level with people. Like like mm-hmm. what what behaviors are you used to in people, and what winds up being like surprising and nice and comforting. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am curious about the 
like I don't know what you would call a Toronto person. Torontonians is what I'm calling them. Sure. The that Torontonians. Is, is it? Uh, yeah. That's amazing. That is, is correct. That yeah. Really? Of course I knew that. Yeah. Um <laughs> so the outside the city. Like if you're from New York and you go anywhere, you're like, I'm from New York. Like we know what like this city's a trash city. New York's a real city. I wonder if that's the thing. Like if someone from Toronto goes to Vancouver, for example, mm -hmm. they're like, what a trash city. This is terrible. I don't know why they sound like that, but that's what all people, that's what all Torontonians sound like. Like, hey, <laughs> sure. what's going on over here? This city, right? Because I'm yeah, so I, 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 I hate to switch back to my Jesse normal Cox. accent for like public <laughs> stuff, but usually I sound exactly like you do, Jesse. That's, God, that's boo, what's today. going on over here? <laughs> You want to go to Quebec? No, man. Right. I, I, what is the, what is it? Does it have the same ego as New York or is it just like, we all, we all, we don't lock our doors. Yeah. Here. We're fine. I think, I think every, everybody, there are a lot of people. Yeah. I, again, outside of Toronto that I've met in smaller places who are just like, I could never live there. The people are like, so mean, uh, like, uh, like Vancouver is so much nicer. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I think, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, and then I just kind of move on. That sort mm -hmm. of seems to be more the vibe for me is just like, yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, it's like very expensive, but it's just like a city, yeah. you know, it's, um, uh, I don't think the same sort of ego exists now where like, there's sort of like the, yeah, we, we know, we love it, uh, New York, but we also like hate it. Like all of that sort of like, mm. um, I don't know. And maybe I just haven't picked up on whatever that sort of specific vibe is, but I don't feel like that exists. I feel like it's one you would immediately like, pick up yeah. on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you'd feel it if you were in the, because that's that's just a, it's an overwhelming vibe. It's just like we're better than you. Like okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, no, oh, I, I have to uh, respond to somebody in the live chat. So what's Toronto's version of New York Spider-Man? Well, we do have a busker here in Toronto who's just called Toronto Spider-Man. Who is just a guy <laughs> who just like climbs a little bit high, sort of like on some stuff. Like you'll just sort of be walking around just like, you know, uh, different neighborhoods. And he'll just be like <laughs> hanging out on top of like a mailbox or something. <laughs> like it's just like... Um, I, uh, then you occasionally I've also seen him in Peter Parker mode as well, just like going going around on his skateboard, just like uh, you can sort of see a little bit of the Spider Man outfit. But um, underneath, yeah. <laughs> so if I Toronto Peter could Parker not have guessed that in a million years. <laughs> yeah, that's. I feel like that's a very. I haven't seen Toronto Spider Man in a in a long time. Oh no, honestly. I hope he's okay. Um, yes. I hope I hope he's fine. I wish yeah. him well. But he's stuck in the Spider Verse. That, I mean, like you yes. know, who did you got stuff to do? You got to chase down Miles Morales. It's yeah, you know, yeah. That's the third movie. It's it's happening. <laughs> I can't wait to see him in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be amazing. He just looks like Spider Man. And you're like, what's different about him? <laughs> From Toronto. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what have you guys been up to this week? Charlie, are you still on Helldivers? I haven't played Helldivers in a minute. Me neither. I'm back on Fortnite. Oh, actually. back in. Back with New the Fortnite fork season. and the knife. Yeah, so very easy to just jump back into a little bit of Fortnite. They yeah. have all of the all of the gods and all of that sort of thing. I mean, I feel like if we're going to have a conversation about Fortnite on a podcast, I need to sort of like preempt it with I, it's a game I resisted for a very long time <laughs> because it was like the game that I saw that like, you know, 12 year old boys loved the most. Um, and I was like, that's not for me. That's for kids. I, like, I don't need to, um, <laughs> I don't need to like be Spider-Man running around with a gun doing silly, do, like dabbing like that's, but then I played it and I was like, okay, it's just, it is actually, it's a fun. Fun, a fun video game. It's There's a, a reason it's so game. popular. Yeah. It's a very easy one to play with my friends. So I've been playing a, a, a bunch of that. Um, what's the vibe of the is, new uh, season? Yeah. It is, yeah, it's like Myths and Legends, I think is the name of it. It's a bunch of like Greek, you can go and like fight uh, Zeus and <laughs> okay. Hades and you can yeah. get their little powers. and As dabbing uh, Spider-Man. That's sort of the vibe, yes. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends said it seemed a little bit like they had uh, like a god, maybe they had like a God of War sort of like brand deal that fell through. <laughs> and <laughs> and they were like, what are we going to do with the, these assets? The vibe of it, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's it's good. It's fun. Um, 
The other thing uh, is I just, I've been replaying Elden Ring uh, oh. with the, the DLC coming out soon. Uh, so I, I made it to the point in Elden Ring where I'll be like prepared for the DLC with like a new character. Cool. Um, and then after that, I was like, I still have the like itch to play more from software stuff. So I finally went back and uh, played through the entirety of Dark Souls One, which I had never finished. Oh. Uh, but I just I just beat that yesterday, and now and now I'm I still the itch still hasn't been foot, like properly scratched yet. So now I need to also replay Dark Souls Three. So that's next on my list. Have you played Lies of P yet? I have not played Lies of P yet. No. Um, I loved that game. Yes. I would you recommend it? that game. Yes. I finished it. I'm really excited for the DLC. Uh, that game wound up being so much better than I could have expected from like a Bloodborne Pinocchio. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. it's yeah. <laughs> so fun. The fights were so good. It's actually quite long. Um, so I don't know how you felt about bloodborne in general but it's it it definitely scratches yeah. like a bloodborne itch more than anything what? bloodborne is my is my favorite of the from software you games so, you, you <laughs> okay absolutely play lies of Pina. <laughs> yeah no i it is on the list it is definitely on the list hmm. i was gonna ask because i was curious just a room temperature check what was your like souls born best of and it seems like bloodborne is the one yes and what like, is yours Dukes. Definitely Bloodborne. Mine? Oh. I don't know. I didn't do... I haven't done Elden Ring. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't... I didn't peep at Sekiro at all. There, there are a few that I've missed. Um, but I really enjoyed Dark Souls 2. I'd revisit okay. that, I think. Um, but vibes-wise, Bloodborne, I think, just has the best aesthetic. Like, the best, the best vibe to it. Um, yes. So um, I will. Yeah. I mean, I like. Okay. I, I will say with Dark Souls Two, that is one that, that I've heard such mixed stuff about that I haven't like gone in. I haven't really like waded into that yet. Um, I will probably play it at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, that's always the one where I there, there's either people who are like that is my favorite of all of them, even though it's like a bit different to the others, mm -hmm. or it's like that is the one that people always skip. Um, and just like almost don't talk about. It's the um, first one I played, yeah. which I think is why yeah. I'm, I kind of feel some affection for it. Uh, uh, so I, don't, I didn't have anything to compare it to, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I think I'm gonna I, say, I will play at some point. I'm, yeah, I'm going to say that you, it's worth the play. Yeah. I don't know if you love it, but it's worth the play. Um, my answer is easy. Uh, Elden Ring, because Octo carried me through that entire game, <laughs> and I didn't have to stress the entire time. And it was the simplest yeah. thing I've ever done, and there was no... I wasn't raging. I wasn't stuck on a boss for five hours. It was great. It was great. So that's the winner. Uh, yeah, he was just like his goofy mage guy, and he went around sorcering everything. And I realized Perfect. how broke it was. That, that man just sat there and was like, pebble, 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 pebble. I'm like... Why the hell am I trying to fight? You're over here breaking the game. Anyway, all I, uh, those are the best ones. The games where I don't have to struggle at all? Mm. What a great experience. That's I'm, I'm all I'm about that struggle, man. <laughs> I, I, that's what I won. I don't know what, I don't know how I have become this person. Cause I played like, I played through, uh, I want to say half of Dark Souls 3, half of Bloodborne and half of Elden Ring and got stuck at various points on all of those games and like gave up on them um and then eventually i got to the point where i like i came back to dark souls 3 after getting stuck on elden ring and then i like just gotten enough skills that i could eventually like get through and beat dark souls 3 and now i've become the kind of person who just like plays uh i've been playing through elden ring at level one uh mm. for that entire game just Amazing. by myself like <laughs> just just like sitting and just trying to beat the fire giant at level one for like five hours and that's that's just that's just how i spend like a casual evening now i've just kind of gotten used to it i, I really like i really like that part of it yeah. i'm almost tempted to say it feels like you didn't really play elden ring but i'm not i'm not that mean 
No, 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 no. You're right. I didn't do anything. But I'm not as bad as our friend Krendor, who straight up just looked at all the stuff in the game and then had mm. people carry him through bosses so that he could go look at stuff. He didn't even play. He just went on a tour of the world and I'm like, well, you didn't play that game. And he's like, I got what I wanted out of it. I'm like, okay. That's fair. But the problem is, is like Dark Souls 3, for example, mm -hmm. I, I, I punked myself. I went in and like the first secret hidden boss that's like kind of around the corner and it's like, I think it's a dog. I don't remember what it is. But like I one shot that thing and I felt <laughs> so cocky. I was like, I'm the best player. And then the next boss beat me so badly, it broke my soul. And I was just like, this is what this game is, huh? And I, the problem is, is I'm like a salt machine. It's why I don't do a lot of PvP, because I will just rage. And it's mm. all my fault. I know this. But I will just be mad at the world. And I hate being mad. I just do not like it. Because it just when it comes out, it comes out. And I'm like... Well, now I'm embarrassed because I'm like just screaming, which is I've I've always felt like, man, I must be a terrible streamer because all I do is yell when I play this game. But then I watch everyone else stream and I'm like, oh, all right, it's not that bad. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. But still, I, I don't want to be that way. Yeah. So I try not to get like, you know, Elden Ring. I was like, I want to play and I want to do stuff. But also I would much rather do it with like a friend who's proficient. And so moments when I die hilariously are really funny rather than me being like, what do you mean? And so there's a, there's some sort of clip out there where Octo and I are running across some water in order to go fight a boss. And I just run into the ocean on an accident and die. And all it is is Octo being like, Jesse, no, <laughs> it's just my body's <laughs> fault. And it's very funny. And I'm like, all right, if I was alone, I would have been furious. Right. Cause the run back was terrible, but like, in that moment, all right, that was pretty funny. And that's how I can tolerate it. Otherwise, I would go yeah. insane. For I me, think, sorry. Um, I think that one of the things that really helped me to get to the point where I was able to play them without being as mad at them is to realize that they are actually all very funny games. It's just that the punchline is you dying. <laughs> and if you're able to see your deaths as actual punchlines, then you can turn that rage into just like, okay, no, this is actually just really funny that they decided to like um, trick me into thinking that there wasn't going to be a guy hidden behind this pillar, but actually it was behind this other place and that, that was the one that got me or something fell on my head and all of that stuff. Like... It can be very maddening, but I, I, yeah, I have a much better time when I'm just like, actually, no, this is just hilarious. Yeah, you died became a meme for a reason, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah, I think for me, it's it's sort of a, a midpoint of I really enjoy the struggle until I don't. As long as a fight is still fun, I'll do it for, you know, six, seven, eight hours. Um, but the second that the fight isn't fun anymore... <laughs> If I'm not enjoying the struggle anymore, I'll, I'll, you know, start using whatever the game can give me to just move on <laughs> to go to the next thing. Cause there are some yes. fights where I'm like, I'm going to feel amazing once I've beaten this. And there are some fights mm -hmm. where I just, I do it twice and I'm like, I, I hate this fight. This is not fun, you know? So it, it depends on the fight for me. I think that was how I felt, uh, it was the bed of chaos, that boss in Dark Souls 1, mm. that is the stupidest boss fight I've ever experienced in a FromSoft game. And I was just like, I, I completely hate this. <laughs> um, and it just is not fun. That's one where it's just, um, it's just a case of like, uh, there is like a tiny like bug hidden in this like, enormous like tree root structure and you have to like try and run around from one side to the other to like bust through the roots to get through mm. and there are these just big hands just sort of slapping you into holes and it just like it takes so long to get to the room and then you i would just constantly walk in be slapped into a hole immediately <laughs> as i entered and just be like well i guess i just have to go back you know it was just uh uh it felt like that that they had just made a big mistake on that one mm. um so I, I relate heavily. I will definitely play Eliza P at some point. Um, because like I said, yeah, I do. Yes. I do really like Bloodborne. And I know I've heard that that game is like the best from software game, not like made by them. Right. Um, that it, has been released. So. Yeah. I was really surprised. And also, um, uh, like from software, they've, they've kind of perfected making games where it's like, 
we know that you probably don't know what's going on. And if you want to know what's going on, mm -hmm. you can, you know, you can read through everything and like piece things together. And that's, and that's really fun for a lot of people. Right. But like, it's okay. You can to watch have... all of the Vati videos. Exactly. You can watch Vati <laughs> video for like eight hours and then you'll know what's happening in the story, you know, but like either way, the game is going to be fun and interesting and, and have this sort of like strange quality to it. Even if you don't really understand what's happening in the game, right. You, you'll still mm -hmm. enjoy a lot of it. Um, Bloodborne Pinocchio, they, you actually know what's happening. <laughs> There's, yes. you know, they, they really take you along for a story that is, that is, I would say as convoluted as a, as a FromSoft storyline. Um, but they they try they they try to be like yes. this is what's yeah. happening in this story you know so it did seem like they were pulling more from like Sekiro in that because that is the one sort of like uh, game that's sort of in that camp even though Sekiro is is like a bit different where I was like oh it's really fun to play a from software game where I know what's happening the whole time <laughs> yeah I I must since we're talking about Sekiro I must say that uh, two nights ago maybe three nights ago mm -hmm. I uh, like might have eaten an edible of some variety <laughs> sure and uh what i was just like in front of my tv and like all goobers i have youtube on my tv and i was like i wonder what's happening on youtube and i proceeded to watch a two-hour video where a guy was trying to connect elden ring to sekiro with the like <laughs> the land of reeds and he's like well like even though they say it's not it's very clear and like going through the, i was like yeah this checks out this actually makes sense. <laughs> I don't I don't remember any of it now. I'm like, I don't know what the connective tissue was, but it seemed pretty accurate at the time. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where I'm at. I'm like, I will watch any video about anything that's in the like souls verse kind of vibe. Cause it's all so mysterious and it's just like gaming archaeologists trying to come up with what it means based off of like one line of text they read on an item. And I'm like, this is brilliant. This is so much fun. Yeah. I love that stuff. I love it too. Really? I don't, I think I don't I, want to be the person to read it, but I will watch people oh, yeah, who have no, read no, everything. No. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to figure it out myself. I think that um, the reason that I gravitate towards Bloodborne so much is I think it is the game that rewards that sort of nosiness the most in terms of mm -hmm. the story. I've found that with like Dark Souls, the more I try and understand the lore, I just sort of have more questions and don't really feel like I get as much out of it, even though I do love those those games. Um, it's more of, that's more of just like a vibes thing. Whereas I feel like mm -hmm. Bloodborne has maybe, it maybe has the sort of like vibe that I'm slightly more interested in with sort of like the Eldritch Horror, but also I find like the, all of the stuff about like, um, all of the people in that story trying to sort of like cheat death in their own weird ways or get gain insight into the world through doing like they thought there's that one guy who shoves a bunch of like eyeballs inside of his head so that he can like see the world with more clarity uh -huh. <laughs> like it's like i don't know that's the one where i just like the more i learn about it i'm just like yeah this is this is there's like a really cool story in that that what like if you just put the effort into like uncovering it or watch vati just explain it to you which is right yeah yeah I, uh, it, this isn't any Dark Soulsy stuff, but it is on the same level of difficulty. Okay. I, um, I'm still stuck in my Final Fantasy VII Rebirth world. Right. And, um, they have, in order to get a summon, you have to fight a summon. And so far, most of them have been pretty simple to do. Uh, Alexander was kind of like a giant pain in the ass, but it was fine. Until I got to Odin. And this dude, his whole mechanic is, if you don't dodge enough of his attacks, and if you get hit too much, he gets bored with you and one-shots the entire party. <laughs> and so I'm like, Sorry. no, no. So I have to be good now. So now I'm like learning this fight. I'm raging like a crazy man. I'm switching up party members. I cannot do this thing. There are times where I'm yelling at him like, how are you bored? How are you bored? And I'm like freaking out. And... Finally, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to manage to do this. And I came up with a strategy. If I just constantly attack him, even if I am getting hit, if I just keep the pressure on, surely this will work. And so one of the best things is Yuffie, her like ninja skills, her combat's amazing. You can just fly up in the air and start attacking a guy, zipping around him. And then she has another ability that makes a copy of her. So now there's two Yuffies zipping around. And I'm like, I will never stop. I'm just going to keep attacking. I'm just going to keep going. 
I thought it was a genius. I thought I had this figured out. I got him halfway through his life, and then he split the map in half. Yuffie stuck on one side, and he just went to the other side with the other two characters. I'm like, no! It is one of those fights where I was like, why is this in my RPG? Why is, like, I want the easy mode. I'm here because I've been over-leveling the entire game. How dare you? So yeah, that happened, and it was a true experience. And then I was like, well, you know what? This is fine. I finally beat it. I was like, oh, thank God. Now let's go do the card game. And in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, there's a card game called Queen's Blood. And I had it figured out. I was like, I got this game. And I was using basic early decks because I was like, please, I know what I'm doing. And I got to the final boss. And the final boss's mechanic is literally a giant FU where all of her cards take over rows of the board. And if you put a card down, it hurts your card and then raises her card's level. So I'm like, what? <laughs> and I've never raged so much at a card game. It's been a rough couple days. I've just <laughs> been a salty monster. And I'm like, all I want to do is fight Sephiroth and maybe like kiss Tifa. What, what's going on? This is terrible. Why is this happening to me? So yeah, turns yeah. out even when I try to escape these types of things, they follow me. And so welcome to gaming. It's what I, was, I think all games should be <laughs> Dynasty Warriors where I just swing an axe and a thousand guys die. Right. That's what I want in my gaming experience. No challenge, only feeling too powerful. And then I can like play for six minutes and be like, well, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go, I don't know, play Civ and get blown up by Gandhi. I don't know. Everything's mm -hmm. terrible. Why is this like this? <laughs> Sam <laughs> just like... finished Rebirth, so I finally get to start it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. You'll, you'll never, love it. I've never played a Final Fantasy game. That's okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't even well, know where to tell you to start. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. It's I, I'm still, I'm still dealing with this, which is that um, when I was a kid, my babysitter uh, was like, I'm going to lend you my copy of Final Fantasy VII. This is the best mm. game, and you're going to love it. Um, and I uh, lost it. <gasps> um, and it was like her treasured copy of the game, and she was so mad at me. And uh, I've never been able to live down that guilt. <laughs> so oh I've never really gosh, got, I've just never gone back to those games. Because I'm still just sort of feeling like every time I'm like, hmm, Final Fantasy VII, yes. I still feel terrible about that one time. Um, so, oh. yeah. Oh. Um, Maybe I'll, maybe I'll play them at some point, but that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Still, <laughs> um, I will say, I, I, Chad, I got that date, and it was awesome. I just want to say for the record, <laughs> I got that date with Tifa, and it was you the did greatest it. Thing I'm ever so happened. proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Greatest thing that ever happened to me. I feel real proud about that. Yeah, Cloud is an awkward mess. It was a real awkward. Oh, oh, oh! Before you continue, Dodger. Yes. Oh my God. For some reason, this is why sometimes Square Enix just, I do not understand them. They sometimes have to like Kingdom Hearts all their games where it's like, we were putting in things from other expanded universe stuff into this. And it's like, okay. So in the game, like in the original Final Fantasy VII, there's just like a poster in the background of a thing called Loveless. It's potentially a play. I don't know. It's not really expanded upon. Then in the game Crisis Core, it becomes one of the focal points of the entire game. That it's like this thing, it's a it's actually a, an old story that became a book that became a play and the bad guy for some reason loves it. <laughs> That's a whole thing. And then in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and I guess a little bit in Remake, it is like there's a moment in Rebirth where you go see the play live. But it is insane. And I'm still obsessed with it because I don't know what actually happened. So the characters walk into to the, to a theater and then they put on VR goggles. So it, I'm like, so it's like you're on the star Wars ride at Disney on the star tours where like you sit in a chair, you put on mm. goggles, then you like are, but then when they put on the goggles, so it's like cloud puts on the goggles and then Every character he knows shows up on stage as part of the play. So already I'm like, all right, time out. What? <laughs> so anyone who watches, like if I was in the audience, would I see me as the main character? and would, Or would I see Cloud and be like, who the hell is this? Right? So that's already happening. And 
you do this whole very cool, very interactive stage performance where you have to press buttons to like put on a performance. It's very cute, very fun. But like all of Cloud's friends are in it. But then it keeps cutting back to the audience where the people that aren't in the play, like, you know, Yuffie or Sid or whoever, they're reacting. The best part is Sid sleeps with the entire thing. Mwah, it's perfect. <laughs> and so all your friends are reacting to the stage because you're in it. And then after you do this whole thing, Aerith shows up, does a music number. It's beautiful. It's this song and it's great. And then it's everyone in the audience reacting like, yeah. But then at the end, Cloud takes off his glasses and he's in the audience. So my question is, <laughs> did Cloud watch a video of him watching himself perform on a stage featuring his friends? Is it like Inception where we're like seven levels deep? I don't know how any of it works. Hmm. And I'm like, wait, so the random NPC, what does he see? Is it like him and his friends? Uh, there's it's it's complete nonsense if you think about it. And it's truly one of the most it's the biggest mystery in all of gaming. I don't know what I saw. It is full metaverse. It's like the meta metaverse. I am obsessed with this because clearly it went through multiple drafts that people were like, yeah, no, this checks out. This is fine. But if you think about it for like even a minute, it is insane. And I can't this is going to be what drives me crazy. I'm going to end up explaining this to people and I'll just be like, I don't know what happened. I don't know. And the entire time after that, I kept, I was like, like there is a moment where characters who aren't even in the scene show up to like cheer on. So I'm like, wait a minute. If I was in the audience, would I see those characters? Would I understand who they were? Why was it all a video? Is th I don't have answers for you. I don't know what I, do saw. I? I don't know what I saw. And all I want to do was kiss Tifa. I had to go to this play. <laughs> this feels like real life. I had to go to this play that I didn't understand and watch a thing that I wasn't really, I didn't get what was going on only so I could kiss this girl at the end of the night. That's all it was. I went through all the motions and I still don't understand what I saw. It was crazy. Anyway. And this in the is, end, you're still is, thinking I, about it. Sounds like it was worth That's it. art, you know? <laughs> I will never not think of uh, This will be in my head forever. It is <laughs> one of the craziest scenes I've ever seen in my entire life where it's beautiful and what's happening is cool, but like the minute you think about it, you're like, what the hell was that? How did that? What did they... Also, why do they have a grand theater with like, actually, it's like you went to a beautiful theater and then you put on a headset. It doesn't make sense. Why do that? It's the, f I don't know, dude. It's the final, it's and the then final a part fantasy semi-future. But you, they take, there's a, <laughs> ah, there's more to it. I just realized there's more to it. And I don't want to talk about it anymore. Because the more I think about it, the more, the deeper it gets. Well, the I thing is, I this. have, because I have like, basically no context as to like, what the world of Final Fantasy is like anyway. It's so hard for me to pass like, what things in the world could be normal and not. Um, I'm like, yes, this is the game where they drive, like ride around on like, giant chickens, right? So it's, it's like, same I'm game. like- Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's, what, what, it's one of those things where it's very clearly not, and none of it's supposed to be taken too seriously, mm -hmm. but also you can't help but be like, hold up. So when it, there's a character who gets a phone call and his ringtone is the victory theme when you win a battle. And I'm like, hold up. So is that just a song everyone knows in the world? Is it like a top 10 hit? But when you win, you're, it'd be like, like, if I won, it's like, girls, who runs the world? Girls, like, it would be crazy <laughs> if that was, that was my victory theme. I mean, I, I would hope that if you know, in the future one day, I had to have like a roving gang that I was part of that that uh, took part in battles, that one of us would step up to the plate and sing something when we were victorious, you know? I, I will say though, the music in the game is amazing. And uh, mm -hmm. they've, there's so much music that there's, there's a theme song for when you escort a dog on a, on a quest. And the song is like, bow, wow, wow. Bow, wow, wow. It's so cute. There's a, there's a theme song when you fight this gang of like, like hoodlums and their whole, their whole song. I don't know what the lyrics are, but it sounds like, Hey, let's get some peas. Let's get some peas. Hey, let's get some peas. I don't know what the lyrics are, but that's what it sounds like. It's great. Every song is great. There's one song when you do the chocobo races, it's, it's, it sounds like a song. I was trying to, 
figure out like how I would describe this. It sounds like the song a 1970s drug dealer would walk to in New York City while taking like a suitcase of like something and he has bell bottoms on. It's like it's great. I love this game. It's very good when it when it's not insane. When it's not insane. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I know you started that by saying I don't even know how to tell you where to start, but I am going to ask you now if I was yeah. to start. Do you do you oh. think you have any instinct? Should I should I begin with the Final Fantasy VII remakes? Is that like the way in right now? So the 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 thing about remake is that it is very like it will tell you the story of the original game, but it's very yeah. heavily geared towards um players who have played it before right. or who are interested in learning about what the original game was like cuz towards the end of remake it gets very like things are going to get weird and so you have to have some sort of context i've always wondered what mm -hmm. people who haven't played it think of that uh like to be honest there's so many final fantasy games like if you want um something a little less like quirky and silly although Maybe that's your vibe when it comes to Final Fantasy. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 is much more serious story and uh, more like watching an HBO drama than mm -hmm. than something else. Um, you know, Final Fantasy. If you, I don't know that you have time for an MMO, but Final Fantasy 14 is very good. Um, Final Fantasy 10. I think I'm going to stay away from that one. Yeah. <laughs> my my own sanity, knowing so how many good, hours some people have put yeah. in, into that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Final Fantasy X is like a solid middle ground entry point. It it looks like one of the older ones, but plays a little bit like a newer one. Um, right. It kind of is is a good, you know, it's one that's universally loved for the most part. And that's probably the place I would say, like, if you wanted to play any Final Fantasy, that would be a good place to start. But, uh, I mean, like, I would say give it a shot. Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth are very, very good. Um but yeah, I don't know if it would be something you like, it depends on how much you want to be confused by a game without having any context for it, but it does a really good job of setting stuff up and establishing characters way more than the mm -hmm. original. Like one of the things I've learned from rebirth is like every character is about 20 times better than they were in final fantasy, the original final fantasy seven. Like they actually have a plot. Now some characters before were like, I'm the pilot. Okay. Like that was that was their whole identity, and now it's like, oh, I love this guy, and so mm -hmm. it's definitely better. It's just one of those things that because I don't have the context of never having played one, I could not honestly tell you if you would like it or not. You there, are, there are a decent yeah. number of people who, because you probably won't be surprised to know that this game has been brought up a couple of times now. Um, pretty much every time we talk about it, there's a few people in chat who say this is my first Final Fantasy and I've enjoyed it a lot. So, you know, mm -hmm. might be worth trying. To I see. think what I should do is I need to, um, I need to cut ties with this like mental hang up I have in relation to losing this copy of Final Fantasy seven. Mm. So maybe I can't start with anything that has seven in it yet. <laughs> sure. And that's I need to fair. sort of ease myself in. It feel, mm. I, based on just like what people are saying generally, maybe I'll just, I'll look at 10 and 16 and sort of see which which of those two sort of like fits my vibe the best. Um, yeah. And then do maybe you, I'll get stuck in. Do you but. like um, big open world sort of stuff? Hmm. Depends. 16 honestly. is more is is more open world than 10. Is more open world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's more like think, small yeah. open world segments rather than one big open world. Like you go from one area to another area, but it isn't like one big map thing. Right. So it's a little more confined. I, there are open world games that I love. Like, you know, Breath of the Wild is one of my all time favorite video games. But I think part of that is because I think they did the open world so well. And mm -hmm. I really am not sort of as big on, we're just going to give you a, a big open world full of just like chores that you need to do. Yeah. Like in that instance, I'd, honestly prefer to have a sort of like a more linear story like unless an open world is like really giving me sort of like an actual feeling of like exploration and discovery which i don't think mm. is an easy thing to do mm. as opposed to an open world that is like 
there to add 10 hours or 20 hours onto the game to make it sort of seem like sure. it has more value. Um, so that's kind of where I am at generally. It kind of, it, it depends sure. on what kind of open world it is for me. Um, as, a, as a super side note, Nine also apparently is great on mobile. Sam played all of Nine on mobile and really enjoyed it. So, on the phone? Yeah. Final Fantasy so, IX is a fantastic game. It's, it is. It's, it's very cute. It's, yeah. it, it gets yeah. a little dark in some places as well, but it's... It's super dark, but yeah. it's also... Like, you did feel such like an old person now. On the telephone? You can play <laughs> that game on the... <laughs> huh? <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. But I've always thought Final Fantasy IX was like ska music, where it's hyper upbeat, <laughs> but the lyrics are like... My life is miserable. Bop, 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 right? Like, that's what it feels like. It mm-hmm. is beautifully drawn. Every, all the characters are very cute, but the plot is like, whoa. It, it's, it's incredibly interesting, that game. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Or you forego all of it and just play Final Fantasy X-2, which is basically just Magical Princess, where everyone... All the abilities are dresses you wear. And I'm not saying... It it's is so awesome. Fun. It might be <laughs> one of the so most fun, fun of all of them. It's incredible. It's I, so much fun. I played 10 2 without ever having played 10. <laughs> I just played all of that 10 is, 2. I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it was so that, fun. Does sound, that does sound very appealing to me. <laughs> yeah. It, and it has one of the best story like arcs because the main character of, of 10 2 is one of the main characters of 10. And in 10, she's like a hyper religious girl who is like, I've got to do my duty. And in 10 2, she's like, party it up, baby. And I'm like, this is the best <laughs> arc I've ever seen in my entire life. So it's, it's good. good stuff. Yeah. Um, one of my friends is really trying to convince me to play the uh, Like a Dragon games as well right now. Oh, and I know that's oh going to be God. a big commitment for me, too. Um, so. That might be what I do next after after what will probably be a replay of Dark Souls 3, plus doing the DLC, which I've never done before, which I know I should do, because mm. I've heard some of the best stuff in that game is in the DLC. But maybe maybe that will be my journey. <laughs> I'm plotting, because there's, there's too many games, but I, so I, have to, I have to think ahead. So it's Dark Souls 3 next, yeah. and then it's going to be... Um, probably both like a dragon games <laughs> and then maybe I'll try X2. Maybe I'll do that. Let me it's... just sell you on one thing from those games. There is a mini game where you call a hotline and it's like a dating line and the per- you talk to someone on the other line and they're like, Hey, how are you doing? You're like, Hey, what's going on? And you have to talk with them, but there's a mini game that happens where you have to fire off kind of like a slingshotty thing at texts flying across the screen and there's ones you want to say and there's ones you don't want to say and (laughs) i had one where i was like flirting with this girl on the phone and i'm like hey baby what's going on she's like so what are you into and i missed my target and hit one and my guy goes i like mice (laughs) (laughs) that was it that lost that she was like what click i was like cool cool." um did either of you play with the play date you familiar with that no, what is that? It's um, it's like a small like it's like a Game Boy like thing. It's like a uh, yellow. Oh. It has like a crank on it. Oh, it's yes, full yes, of like yes, indie yes, games. Yes. I've seen yeah. it, but I haven't played it. Yeah, I haven't played it. Yeah, there is a game because I I have one. I haven't played it as much as I would like to have. But there is a game in that which is it's basically like uh um it's basically like a visual novel. But every time you need to make a decision, you have to like solve this puzzle that involves rolling this ball. Um, through like a little maze and if you like miss a jump then you'll end up like maybe hitting your ball into one of the like dialogue options that you wouldn't necessarily want it's basically like what you just described just that that's, awesome. own that's tiny amazing game. it's such a cool concept it's so well done so i can't remember the name of that game though. i was gonna ask if you remembered what the yeah. name of the game was <laughs> just one of the play date games <laughs> one of the many ones how many how many games are on there no, I was about to ask, how many games are there there are a ton of them, but they're all like they're all so small. The thing about it as well is they will just send you a bunch of free ones mm. um, when you get it. Um, but then there are also like a bunch of people who make playdate games, just like and release them just on itch as well, and you can just download them. Mm. I had one game that was just the leak spin meme, 
and you would spin the crank and then you could just Amazing. play the meme as faster or slow or in reverse. And that was the whole game, <laughs> just spinning the little crank. Um, that was one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good <laughs> use of, of, stuff, of yeah. uh, <laughs> the system. Yeah. All these games look so cute. Just looking at the art style of them, you can tell that a lot of devs had a, some fun making these. I'm on the, the play.date yeah, 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 yeah. website right now. It's very cool. Yeah, it's so cute. I, I feel like I've seen this thing on TikTok. But I don't, I, until now, didn't know anybody that actually had one, so. Yeah, no, I, I have one, like I said, I haven't played it that much. It's actually pretty easy to stream with as well. Um, hmm. You just, just plug it straight into your PC just via USB, and then um, it has its own sort of like little window that you can show people oh, if you want to. Awesome. So I've done that. It's, it's really nice. How cute. I love on their website, they also are just like, here are the categories of games too. <clears throat> so you can look in and it's like here's story based games or here's you know puzzle games or here's the like the best hits we have mm -hmm. that's good stuff i like that mm. i think i honestly mostly ended up just playing pick cross on it which is just honestly i okay. love pick cross <laughs> i would 100 yeah. percent use it for that yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i i, yeah, I no, can't i can't find the link to it but i saw there's a game called recommendation dog and I don't know what any of that means, but I really want to to go look at it. Apparently, it's a dog, and it just says recommendation dog two exclamation points. I don't know what that is. Somebody said the dev of Oberdin made a game for the playdate, and I loved Oberdin, so I'm really curious about that. Me too. too. That's um, that's an all time all timer for me. Yeah, I love Oberdin so much. I actually think it's probably probably about time for me to go back and replay it because i think i might have forgotten enough about mm. everything in it now that i could go back and and figure out the mystery again but yeah that was also i played it with my partner at the time and um it was a really fun game to play with like a non-gamer because it was because so much of it is just about just like trying to figure stuff out right and it was just like just as engaging to play with someone else just just watching trying to figure out like how to connect everything even if they weren't ever like touching the controller yeah i played with my mom it was great you played over yeah, yeah, dinner yeah. with your mom that's cute yeah I, my mom is one of those people that likes the idea of games but just isn't gonna ever play them mm -hmm. except mm -hmm. for some reason uh la noir which was she oh. was like jesse can i borrow your xbox to play la noir i'm like what why she's like i she loves mysteries but i love mysteries too mm -hmm. she's like i would love to play apparently there's a thing where you can instead of driving you can press a button and it will drive you everywhere so the game oh. did all the driving for her and she Great. just solved the mysteries and i was like mm -hmm. okay she loved there it and uh we played oberdin and then we also played the cat whatever that cat game was stray together oh cute. she wanted to play yeah. that I'm impressed that out of the blue, she's like, I'm sure I want to play this game. I'm like, okay, cool. My mom has, always do that. My mom has always been the, I'm going to sit in a chair and watch you play. I don't want to touch anything. I just want to watch <laughs> sort of, sort of person. Mm. So Dr. Mario, that was her fave when I was growing mm -hmm. up. She, she always wanted us to play Dr. Mario so that she could watch. This is very That's cute. my dad with Tetris. <laughs> he was, I remember my dad is such a, such a liar. We, uh, n currently he's like, I don't even get video games. I don't know how it works. I don't know what you guys are doing, but I vividly remember being a kid and him having a game boy. So like, how dare he, how dare he <laughs> pretend he's not into games. He's I was like, I watched he's changing history, dude. Oh, that sounds like my dad. My dad will wake up, have breakfast. And then six hours later, he's like, I haven't had anything to eat today. I'm really hungry. I'm like, I watched you have breakfast, dude. <laughs> He's like, no, that didn't happen. Like, what? What do you mean? So yeah, that man, that man changes history. We've come full circle. He just enjoys. Mm -hmm. He enjoys a good complain. Yes, I, mean, <laughs> I get it. I understand. So he's like, this is what I'm going to complain about. And if you try to catch him out on it, he's like, no, let me have this. Let me complain. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to decide if I'm sad that my parents were never into video games or not. And I think ultimately I'm happy that I didn't have to like also share like any consoles with them. So I think I'm fine with the yeah. idea that they never really wanted to play anything. I think I maybe, you know, handed my mum the controller to play Mario Kart with us once. And she was like, I don't understand this, but I'm happy you're enjoying it. And that was about <laughs> it. I think it's the furthest I ever really got with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a... There's a video out there. It might be on like games 
spot. I don't know. There's a video where my parents and I were, we did a video together for the beginning of Final Fantasy 14 and Walker, where they brought my parents out to like look through the game with me. And let me tell you, my mom was on top of her game. She was like guessing things. We did a whole thing. Like, what do you think this is? What do you she was like, my dad, he was obsessed with the stupidest things. He was like, hold on. Why is that man wearing a tie, but he's not wearing a suit? Like, that doesn't even make sense. They're like, what is it? He would, it was one of the goofiest things I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm so thankful I got to do that because watching them react to something that I'm passionate about, my mom bought in completely. She was like, I don't know what this is, but I know my son loves it. So I'm going to just buy in. My dad could not be asked. He was just like, what is this? Who is this person? What is that? How's that work? Who is this? There was a moment we had to make a character and my mom decided to make one of the bunny boys, which, you know, I get it. That's what everyone makes. And the entire time she was just like, he's wearing far too much clothes. How do we get rid of that? And I'm like, mom, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to make like, he's very hot, but too much clothes. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Meanwhile, my dad was like, I don't know what's going on. But then he, at the very end, he tried, we got in the game. He's like, wow, this is a world that everyone can be in together. I'm like, yeah, dad. He's like, that's so cool. It was literally just the starting area of a town. It was just like, and he's like, wow, look at this. I was like, he's trying. <laughs> Bless his sweet soul. He's trying. <laughs> yeah. It was cute. That does sound cute. Yeah. Um, I am. Um, sorry. I did remember that uh, the one game that my mum was really into was Pokemon Go. That was mm. the thing that she did become completely obsessed with. And I've been meaning to and still want to do, uh, I want to do like a name the Pokemon quiz with her because I just feel like she probably must have internalized so much of this information. And I just need to like know how much better my mum is at naming all of the Pokemon than me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Have you ever have you ever seen that video? I don't remember who made it, uh, but it's a fake news uh, broadcast where this woman is really upset that this guy is talking about Pokemon, but he doesn't know any of the Pokemon names. Mm -hmm. And she's like, she's like, he doesn't even know Beedrill. He's like, that's Big Dick B, right? And just it's yes, it's I really love that funny. video. Everybody knows end, that's Big Dick B. Yeah, <laughs> right. A classic. And then the end, like, oh, that's. Oh, that's Pikachu. And she's like, well, everyone knows Pikachu. I would love to know. I just If we could just format it like that with your mm. mom, that would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that's Big Dick B. <laughs> I always love watching when uh, artists don't know Pokemon at all and uh, draw Pokemon based on descriptions and then like yeah. go look up what the Pokemon actually looks like afterwards. That mm -hmm. stuff, that's mm -hmm. evergreen content for me. Because there's so many Pokemon now. You could describe just about anything, and it probably is a Pokemon that exists. Um, yeah, it's it's so fun. And people are like, I don't know Pokemon, but sure, I'll draw, uh, <laughs> you know, something that looks like a piece of paper with eight lights hanging off of it and one giant foot. Sure, that sounds, sure, okay. <laughs> I did a video <laughs> with with... Alex, our dear friend Alex uh, Fasciani, mm -hmm. who's huge into Pokemon, knows everything about Pokemon. And the whole thing was, I would he was blindfolded, and I pulled a card, and I had to describe to him what the Pokemon looked like, and yes. he would guess the Pokemon. There's some of them that I was like, okay, uh, so it's like a tank, but it's a bird, but also has six wheels and feathers coming out of its back. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it has feathers and wheels, dude. I don't know what to tell you. And he's like, there's no Pokemon with wheels. I'm like, it has wheels, man. There's. He's like, how would you describe it? I'm like, round? They look like they could drive off road? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, wheels. Yeah, it's, it's a great video. He got, like, almost everyone. It was impressive. That's I was amazing. blown away. I was, yeah. He so I guess if you're really Pokemon. into Pokemon, you know it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I felt so cool when I was younger and I knew all of the like original generation Pokemon by heart. I was like, this is a skill that is going to serve me well in the future. And, <laughs> and now it's just a drop in the bucket of all the Pokemon <laughs> that there are. Mm -hmm. Gen oh, one feels so like, Pokemon. 
Yeah, Gen 1 feels like when you take your first couple science classes and you <laughs> yeah. think you kind of get it all, and then you are hit with chemistry and you're like, well, then this isn't fair. And it's the exact same vibe. It's like, yeah. you can't just keep making more science. Like, that's not how this works. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Uh, I am I'm purely just sort of like a 100, the original 151 Pokemon mm -hmm. person. Like, I... Pokemon Blue was my first video game, and every time I've tried to go back and play a newer Pokemon game, I'm always like, this is the time I'm going to care about Pokemon again. I always get about a third of the way into it, and I'm like, I don't care <laughs> about this anymore, unfortunately. I always try. Yeah, I, I, I really do want to love more Pokemon games and, and play them. But um, yeah, I mean, I got obsessed with the first one. I actually played it so much that, because that one has like the... Game Boy One had like an internal battery in yes. it, right? As you, to hold your save data, and I played it so much that the battery ran out. So I, I, I remember I finally got to the point where I had all 151 Pokemon, and then it just told me that that was it. You, you were done, and I lost, <laughs> I lost everything, and no! then just never played it again. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you were talking about uh your your traumatic experience losing Final Fantasy VII, I was going to say. Mm -hmm. One of the things that that kept me out of the Pokemon fandom for a long time was when uh, Pokemon Yellow came out and mm -hmm. my friend brought it to school and was like, you can play it, but don't let it get taken by the teacher because then I'm probably it's going to be really hard for me to get it back because I'm not supposed to bring it here. And I was like, OK, no problem. And literally the second I started playing it, the teacher took it. And he was so upset. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, oh, God. And I felt so bad about it that I didn't play Pokemon for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I have another another very guilty story related to Pokemon, <laughs> which is that um, I got my brother to restart his Pokemon game so that he could trade me, you know, all of the starters. And I was so sure that it would be fine for him to do that so long as he didn't save the game. Not thinking about the fact that whenever you want to trade Pokemon, it automatically saves right before oh, you do no. that. Oh, no. Yeah. So, um, I, I, yeah, got my brother's game wiped because I wanted my, I wanted Bulbasaur. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Oh, I'm a monster. No. Oh, my gosh. But it was, it was by accident. It was by I know, accident. It was by accident. But, yeah, that is what happened. If we're going to share traumatic stories from our youth, <laughs> yeah. I would like to share this one. Um, in school, uh, there was a young girl who had this the, the CD Snow. Uh, I think it was like six inches of snow or something like that. Not a great... This is the guy who was like... Uh, if you want to look up who Snow was, one of the many bad rappers that occurred during the uh, 90s. Okay. Yeah. Um, I believe his song was like Informa, you know, some a licky boom boom down that guy. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Let me that CD. Lost that CD, and I felt terrible. But apparently, she felt worse because when we graduated in our high school yearbook, she wrote, "Enjoy the snow CD." So that happens. I have no idea where it's at. <laughs> she Couldn't tell truly you. held a it grudge, did, but dude. she <laughs> held that grudge wow. forever. Wow. And you know what? I don't blame her. It was snow. 90s rap artist snow. <laughs> so I get it. I get it. Yeah. And I'll never forget. Yeah. It's somewhere. So, you know, I feel like that's of equal level as ruining your entire Pokemon save. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, that seems, uh, yeah, that seems fair. Mm -hmm. Chat, hopefully this is making some of you feel better. It's, uh, we've all, we've all done something mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. made us go, am I a monster? <laughs> I might I be. The the main lesson I learn uh, from both like receiving lend games and lending games is just you have to be comfortable with the fact that if you're going to lend someone a game, you will just simply never see that again. Like you just have to be okay with that. Even yeah. as an adult, I will still lend friends games, and I just will I'll lose contact with them. You know, yeah. I'll just be like, I guess I don't have God of War anymore because I gave it to you know mm -hmm. a friend's like boyfriend at the time, and they broken up, and it's just like it's just and gone. It's now. Gone. I think you just yeah. have to accept it. You know, but that's you just need to be able to say goodbye to it. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, <laughs> I can think of a couple different things that I've I've given out to people and been like, 
yeah, this might be my last moment with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. It's, it's Have you ever given anything, me anything? anything? Huh? Have you ever given me anything? Uh, like to borrow? I don't think so. G good, because I would not remember if that I was the case. I also don't I couldn't remember, think of anything. so I don't think so. All right, so. that's great. 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 <laughs> you know what? Awesome. So we're both fine. Either yeah. way. <laughs> Either way, it's fine yep. for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> oh my uh, anyway, moving on from that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I have nothing. I just uh, was trying to move us on from me remembering if you gave me anything. No, the only... Uh, I mean, actual gifts I remember. Not like... Not like here, would you like to borrow this? You know? Right. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm worried now. You're making me worried now. <laughs> Should I don't be me, worried? What do you mean? Don't be, what, don't be worried. What are you talking about? Don't be worried. Because you're, you, because you're chuckle yaying. <laughs> I what can't. a good friend you are. What are you talking about? It's fine. It's fine. Wasn't it's Young Dodger it. a thief? <laughs> what? Oh, I did go through a stage uh, in preschool where I. I took things home all the time because, okay, because this is a side tangent, but I'm still salty about it because I can also hold a grudge because when I was little, the, the nursery slash preschool that I was going to, uh, they had nap time, right? And all of us would take a nap and whoever did the best at nap time would get a, a stuffed animal to take home. And I loved nap time. And I kept thinking one of these days, one of these days I'm going to get one of the, because I always fall right to sleep because I love nap time and they never gave me one. And I got so salty and village and or villain origin story about it that I just started taking shit. So every day I would just take something home and be like, yep, I got it. Cause I did so good at nap time. And my mom didn't question it until I tried to take a teddy bear that was the same size as me out the door and they stopped me and they were like, we think that she might be taking stuff all the time. A lot of our toys have gone missing. And my mom was like, she said that, but she said that she said that those were the, and they, yeah. So <laughs> I had to return all of them. My parents told me that, uh, they, they did a whole con where they were like, well, maybe you just won't turn five this year. And I was like, what? what? <laughs> like that could be a punishment that they could dole out was that I just wouldn't get older. <laughs> and I was little enough that I believed them. And I was so horrified uh, and brought everything back and said, sorry, but I've never heard that before. That is, um, I'm <laughs> sorry. That's such a good lie to tell a child <laughs> kind of kind of yeah. rules. Uh, <laughs> I think my I kid's too big for that to work on her, but it would have been a really good one. Yeah, the whole like the whole idea that I was very good at nap time is I was. I don't even know what that means. You just slept. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I didn't throw a fit. I would put down my roll. I would lay down. I would nap, and then I would get up when it was time to get up. Okay. What else did they want from what? me? Do you think that it was like? <laughs> They were using that as a mechanic to try and encourage the kids who were like not good at nap time yes. to get yes. better at it. And then they would yes. reinforce that. But you were always just good at it, that it was never a priority Yeah. Um, for them. Yeah, that's ultimately what was happening. I think well, I yeah. think as an adult looking back, yes, that's 100% yeah. what it did was. They, did they corporate world you? <laughs> that's great. Where you were like, I'm doing the best job. Why am I not like getting a raise or getting it's because right. you're already doing a good job and like. They don't, don't need to incentivize it. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Wow. I know. <laughs> what, this was, <laughs> let me ask you, how many people were in your class? Uh, as a little kid, it felt like 50. <laughs> okay. As Probably a little kid, like, it felt like a gymnasium full of children, but I have no idea. Was it a gymnasium? Like, I'm just trying to figure out where you Young grew Eve up. feels like it might have been. <laughs> Like what's like, just okay, from all your stories? Yeah, I imagine you grew up in in some sort of like raised by wolves situation where so, you were lived in a raised by wolves situation. But my mom worked in Portland, and the nursery had to be uh, near my mom's work. Okay. 
So okay. So oh, it might have been so a gymnasium full like, of kids. I don't know. You were like the kid that showed up with the crazy hair, barefoot, <laughs> the feral kid <laughs> with twigs. Yeah, and just like, hey, everybody, I'm Hi, guys. in the wilderness. I'm really excited to play with all of you. <laughs> what are we playing? We playing mud kitchens. <laughs> we were never playing mud kitchens. What is mud kitchens? Mud kit. When you what? <laughs> <laughs> what you, don't say what don't say what like that's a thing i should know yeah we all know mud kitchens don't, don't you we? know mud kitchens no when we all you know and love mud kitchens when you set up like a little fake kitchen for a kid but everything that they're cooking with is mud kids love this chat confirm for me kids cooking love mud kitchens mud yeah. I thought, I, I don't know why I assumed that it was like, we're going to go into the backyard and like make a kitchen out of mud. <laughs> no, you're not making the kitchen out of mud. It would be like old pallets and like, you know, weird pieces of wood and stuff. And then you give them old pots and pans and then a bunch of mud and you go, have fun. And then they mud kitchen. Why does. I guess. Mud Kitchens is such a ridiculous name for this. I've never heard the term Mud Kitchens in my life, and I love it. <laughs> love it. It's very fun. Kids love it. Kids love it. I don't care if you're feral or not. You love Mud Kitchens. Get your kid a Mud Kitchen, dude. Get your kid a Mud Kitchen. Get your kid a Mud Kitchen, dude. Get your kid a Mud Kitchen, which basically just means... <laughs> Let him play in the bring mud. Your kid a bring your kid a bunch of mud. Yeah. And then tell him to go wild. Exactly. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I mean, I can see that being fun as a kid. I can. Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the end of that thought. The other, the other game that I used to love is, uh, is making perfumes, which I'll put in quotation marks. Which was my my friend's mom would just give us like a weird little glass bottle and be like, "Go make me a perfume," and we'd just pick a bunch of terrible smelling flowers and put them in water and go, "We've made a perfume." That's cute. That's cute. That was very That's fun. fun. Yeah, make a perfume is cute. Mud kitchen, crazy. Mud That's kitchen's like way more name. fun than perfumes. Okay. It yeah, sounds well, crazier, but it's more fun. What kind of mud meals would you make? Do you remember? I don't really remember. It depend. I think it kind of depended on the consistency of the mud. Right. Can I can I form something right. or not? You know, like how mm -hmm. how slorpy are we going? Some days it just got to be mud soup. Some it days it has to be mud soup. There's too much water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. That, I think I had a more messed up childhood. <laughs> Like we didn't we didn't make mud kitchens. We would uh put like M80s under army men and blow them up. We would uh ride our bikes off of I have a vivid memory as a child that in when we used to live in Virginia, we lived in a road that was kind of like they were still kind of building out the area. And so at the end of the street, there was a ditch, a huge ditch, and a ramp that went up into it and one day it rained and it filled with mud and water and we all got on our bikes and we rode off the ramp into the ditch. And I'm going to let you know, uh, don't do that. That could, there could have been anything in there that mm. could have hurt a bunch of little kids. Did not matter. We rode off and then my dad had to come down the street and he got like a stick and he like corralled us back to the house. We're covered in mud and we're like, that was awesome. And that kind of thing. Or we like would bo uh, borrow people's golf clubs and swing them around like crazy people. I got hit in the head with it. So like, that's the thing that happened. Um, you know, we did like, I think I was a real, I think you might've lived in the wilderness, but I was the wild child. You were Sid <laughs> from Toy like, Story. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did, we did weird stuff. We yeah. would always, we would like go down by the river and like, like go on little like ridiculous Huckleberry Finn adventures. Like, come on, everybody, let's go. We like walk down by the river, like throw rocks at nothing. Like, come on, we gotta watch out. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know how I was raised. I'm not <laughs> sure. I think the streets raised me. I don't know what happened. I was like a weird kid. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm proud of all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'd have firework fights. 
we'd throw those poppers at each other and you try to dodge them. All everything you're describing is dangerous. You know that? <laughs> I'm aware. Mud There's kitchens a reason why. are weird, but they're not dangerous, okay? Unless you're I've eating it. Mud. Yeah, unless they accidentally eat the mud. So. <laughs> that sounds just there as likely a- to happen if you're just like like, you know, face planting into a big mud puddle anyway. So. True, fair. There was there was a time where all the playgrounds used to have sticks instead of, like, grass. Mm. And then we would jump off. We'd try to get the swings up as high as we could go. We'd jump off. And at one time, landed face first and a stick sticking out of my head. <laughs> my parents wow. were like, we thought you would be dead. We didn't think you would make it because I kept getting hurt doing dumb stuff. And I just want to let you know. That was my childhood. So when you talk about mud kitchens, that sounds lovely, but yeah. insane. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, yeah, we go down to the local fireworks store <laughs> at like 11 years old and pay a grown adult a bunch of money to get a bunch of fireworks. And then we light army men on fire to like have a war and we blow them up and be like, good God. We like light them and run. And then my dad would come home and the fire, the entire driveway would have scorch marks on it. And his punishment was... All right, I'm gonna need y'all. If you want to be in the military, you have to do push-ups, and so you make a bunch of kids do push-ups. Like it was crazy. It was. I, I don't know what happened. Something something. But- American education system. Something something something. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to think I maybe just had a normal childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! I was just like, yes, I, 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 I did ride around on bikes and I had played with my friends. I mean, we did some things that might have been dangerous sometimes. We did a bit of like the old, in our like uh, uh, my childhood home. There was like the the sort of like driveway cul de sac had this like really big slope going down. Mm. So we would do a lot of just like going up as high as we possibly could and sitting on a skateboard and just going right. um, and mm. just hoping that we would make it to the end and be safe. But, <laughs> you know, it wasn't it wasn't uh, quite all that. I mean, I had my, like, bad phase where I did uh, I, I did go out and do some graffiti with my friends. I remember oh. doing that. I had a graffiti yeah. phase as well, yeah. Did not what? last very long, but um, <laughs> I, I did. There was the, there was a, at least one brief moment where I was trying to like figure out what my tag might be. Mm. Um, I did do that, but I think I was just too much of a wuss for sort of like that life. I also remember trying to like learn how to skateboard at the skate park and just like mm. I could not for the life of me like drop into the smallest of the possible ramps there. Um, like I remember my friend brought me to the skate park like really early, like on a Sunday morning so that no one would be there. And it was just right. like me, him and just like some like child. And I was just <laughs> like, I still I just I could not do it. <laughs> I could never do an Ollie. I was so bad. But all of my friends were skaters. So I just I tried my hardest, but I just sure. was not built for it. It's scary. I was I you was know, like thought all of that stuff was so scary. Like in general. What would you, because I think both Dodger and I have this idea of like an American childhood, but like Mm -hmm. growing up and I don't know like where in the UK you grew up exactly, but like, what was that vibe like? Was it, because in my mind, sadly, I'm corrupted by every time I've been to London, there's always a little child and the child's like, mommy, Mm can we go get some I don't know, T to die. And I'm like, what a cute kid. What do they do in their life? So I'm curious, <laughs> like, what, is, what was, uh, besides, you know, skateboarding, awesome, especially going downhill dangerously, mm-hmm. you know, graffiti, tagging things. Okay. But like, you know, I, did you grow up on one of those streets that is just, it seems like nothing is open after 5 p.m.? Like, what was the vibe? That is, I mean, I lived in a small, like, village mm. uh, outside of this uh, town called Bath in the in the UK. Okay, sure. Um, which is in the in the southwest. Um, it is a very beautiful place, and I did not realize until I ultimately moved out, uh, and I moved to, like, incredibly, like, grimy, like, East London, and then I was like, oh, wow, I was living in sort of like a, like a, like a picturesque, like, you know, um, just like a perfect sort of like book of what you imagine, just like uh, what England to be like um, mm-hmm. was originally founded by the Romans, like a bunch of like amazing architecture and stuff like that. Um, just really, really lovely. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, um, was it, was it mummy? Can we go have some tea? Or was, <laughs> <laughs> was it, was it quite like that? Um, yes. Um, 
everybody wears white frilly dresses uh, regardless of your gender identity mm -hmm. um, and goes 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 to the tea shop together um, and um, the 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 teacher teaches you over over crumpets and mm -hmm. that's uh, every day as a as a British child that's how it is that's Clark's life so yeah not much, yeah. Has, not much has changed yeah yes. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds cute I don't I don't like our our little nephew uh who is four now i think um he will ask for tea which is so bizarre to me like can i have a cup of tea like you're four <laughs> you're four years old i don't think what i do started mean? asking for tea until maybe my like really early teens or, or tweens like maybe around 12 was when i first started drinking tea right and that was like i had to have it with like five sugars in order mm. to like stomach mm. in um it was uh it was, and that was just lovely because just just to know that i could have just like an amazing like incredibly like sugary drink whenever <laughs> i wanted to so long as it was tea like you know going right. to going to like get a bunch of soda was like off limits but you could add as much sugar to your tea as you wanted to and it would be fine the public perception and then I just, like, yeah of ordering a tea just, like, versus a mountain dew <laughs> yes exactly probably way more sugar in what i was drinking um but then i just slowly wean myself off uh off the sugar and uh now it's just uh, now it is it's just a necessary thing that i need to have tea mm -hmm. it is one of the british stereotypes that i completely align with like i cannot really function unless i'm having maybe three a day oh my goodness that's a lot is, of tea it's a lot of tea is iced tea a thing in the uk in england is it like a is anyone iced tea because i don't think that's i want to i want to say it's not a thing not it, in an american way i don't think yeah i would never you like uh, cause I was, I was dating this girl who was like from the South and I was like learning that to them tea was like, you will have iced sugary tea. And that was very mm. confusing to me that that was just like the description of tea. That's what it meant. Um, and, uh, I mean, I don't think I have ever bought iced tea in the UK. I don't think that's something I ever did. It must exist. Um, I'm like it must be accessible, of, but it's like, like I've seen it. Yeah. it's just not something that, I mean, I, I drink it now living in canada occasionally if it's like hot um or probably you can get like a bottle of it or something but it's like it's not by any means the first thing you think of when it comes to tea i almost exclusively only drink iced tea yeah mm. it's not like sweetened or anything it's just normal tea but with ice yeah and i don't know but i won't drink iced coffee which is i don't know mm. i I guess it's all preference. Yeah, I have no idea how it works. Their, yeah, but I thing. keep thinking like every time I've been to London, it's just like tea. I'm like, sure. And then I'm drinking a hot tea in the middle of summer. Like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you should cool. look for it about, next time. Yeah. British people will try and convince you that drinking hot tea when it's hot out is, is will cool you down. That is one of the yes. things that they will do. I have been told that a few times. So it's also the that. same when people say that the best time to eat ice cream is in the winter. Mm -hmm. Because then the like, inside, okay. no, the, that one. your your inside won't be as different as the outside, and then and then you don't feel it as strongly or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it works. But, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to pass that one really hard. And, and I, I, the only thing I do know is that statistically, more ice cream is sold in the winter. So I don't know how it all checks out. I just know that that's huh. the truth, which is weird. But maybe it's just, it's just okay. like uh, you staying inside more and just like <laughs> being more lonely. So you just want to eat more ice cream. That kind <laughs> just of like screw it. <laughs> checks out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> checks out. Um, um, so I do need to respond to this comment. Sweating will cool your body down. Yes, it. Yes, it will. All right. Yes, it will. But you know what also will cool your body down is drinking a cold drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yes. I just, I'm, I like, I just simply, do, I've never understood when people say that. But they, that is a big thing that people in the UK say. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, that's because everyone just sweats. Because for some reason, you've foregone all air conditioning. And I have no well, reason. I, 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 can't, I can't help you there. I can't yeah. help you there. 
again, it is it is silly because it does. I I think it, like most of the time it is mild, right? Most of the time it doesn't matter. But when it when it's not, it's brutal. It's so mm-hmm. horrible to not have that that air conditioning system. Um, and I again, I'm not really sure. I think it's just sort of like probably old British homes, sort of like so many of them are built with like to be as insulated as possible to keep as much heat in to like save as much energy and it's just all set up just completely wrong so for those specific times when it just will will be hot and then you'll just spend all of your time just sweating all the time it's horrible yeah it feels like since i've moved here it's been hotter each summer so that's, that's you not no it's fine you're fine don't worry about it i mean it's <laughs> fine i mean nothing's wrong <laughs> nothing's, nothing's wrong it's fine don't worry just about kidding it. i mean nothing's wrong yeah yeah everything's totally fine <laughs> the guy at the gas station said everything is fine don't worry oh, about okay it. as long as he said yeah, it's, it's fine cool. then i'm sure everything's no, it's good cool. it's cool yeah it's okay fine. great 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 great, great. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah um awesome charlie thank you so much for for joining us uh the the thing that we like to do with our guests at the very end of the show Mm -hmm. um is ask them if you had to suggest which you will have to in a second if you had to suggest (laughs) um, if i had to do this thing you're about to you have to do in a minute here um if you had to suggest a, a show a movie a comic a book um, anything like that, that, that you think maybe people don't give as, as much attention to something really good. What would it be? Oh no. Oh no. This is the sort of thing I needed to prepare for. And I have not prepared anything. <laughs> so, we mm. always... What's something you love that you think other people should love too? What do you, what, uh, oh God. All right. Hold on. It's okay. Take give your time. This is, no. this is like, we this can is just the, awkwardly like, stare ask, at This is the Oscar woman thing where someone says name a woman and then you're just like <laughs> <laughs> my mom i don't know um just can't think of anything <laughs> um <laughs> yes the little known get name the game uh known as fortnite um let yes, me uh fortnite uh what what can i talk about that uh hmm I really, I really have absolutely nothing. Can I just, can I just That's say okay. something that I've been enjoying more recently? Absolutely. The, yeah. the, the, I, I just started watching uh, the Dungeon Meshi Netflix show, and I'm absolutely loving that. Yes, uh, very Because good. I've been playing a bunch of D&D recently, I've been DMing, um, and uh, we have a character in that campaign who is a chef, and I've been getting so much inspiration from watching that, that show in terms of just, like, how to, how could, to connect uh, like a chef character with like dungeon crawling. So uh, that's, that's just a general recommendation that I will give to anybody uh, right now is something I've been enjoying, but yes. you know, unfortunately all of my more recent uh, interests have been, I don't know, <laughs> things that are very well generally loved. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I don't have anything great. Sort of that's a great me. suggestion. It is, it is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also called Delicious in Dungeon, depending on where you try to watch it. Chat, just saying. Yes, gotcha, I should okay. say it's called Delicious in Dungeon, but everybody I speak to calls it Dungeon Meshy, which of is course. because it's it's Delicious in Dungeon is not a very good title. Yeah. And so we just want to call I it. I was going to say because uh, you're friends with a bunch of filthy yeah. weebs, but yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> also that. <laughs> Who will keep trying dungeon. to convince me that I am one, but I <laughs> refuse D&D, to admit it. which is kind of cute. Right? Yeah. It's kind of cute, yeah. right? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really cute. And the manga is fantastic as well. Uh, any of you mm-hmm. who know Studio Trigger, it's the, Trigger is the one that uh, is animating and producing it, and it's very good. Okay. Yeah. I said I said something. And it, you it, did. You crushed we, it. We, we did that. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> if it helps, we spring this on literally everybody, so I'm very sorry that we didn't give you a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. It's almost like we should do that, but nah. It's almost like we should. If, but if you, is it fair then to everyone who came before? Right, exactly. Who we had to, to just that. come up with some right, <laughs> spot? right. So you just continue to torture everyone from so, now till the end, just yeah. because of the, yes. the, the, the few people. I think that's, <laughs> that's only fair. This on initially. I think so. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, well, can I just say, as someone who um, has has been on the surprise end, um, I, I do not condone the behavior of continuing <laughs> to do it, um, <laughs> despite the clear Fair evidence enough. that it is quite <laughs> quite difficult to think of an answer to this question on the spot. Um, fair enough, fair enough. But All that's right. just my opinion, and it's your podcast, mm. so please, please do what you will do. Mm. Yes, perhaps. <laughs> All right. We'll think, we'll discuss. We'll think about it. <laughs> I will have forgotten by next week. <laughs> that sounds about and right. And next week, once again, we'll say, hey, uh, on the spot, could you suggest a, a movie, TV show, comic? And then we'll go, wait a minute. Weren't we not going to do this anymore? Dig I don't know. Even I do we make a promise? I, mm. No, surely not. Surely not. <laughs> uh, Charlie, you are lovely. Would you like to tell everybody uh, who you are and where they can find you and how how to keep watching you sure i mean the main thing these days is is just twitch so it's just twitch.tv forward slash cool like um i do i do make youtube videos very occasionally that is the thing i used to do the most but that's become sort of like a once every every once in a while when i feel up to it type of deal that's yeah. just youtube.com forward slash charlie but the main the main thing is twitch these days and i'm you know i just play i just play all sorts Mm. Um, and chat and watch videos and all of that stuff. Uh, we've been doing Frog Week over on my stream. What does recently, that mean? Which has been fun. Um, we've been playing uh, a bunch of froggy games, which has ultimately oh, okay. just culminated in me playing a lot of Frog Detective. Um, Going to be playing the third one in like 10 minutes. <laughs> um, oh, nice. So that's, uh, that's what's going on with me. Um, having lots of silly froggy redeems. My stream is currently covered in frog stickers. That's been, that's been a lot of fun. Um, but you know, I'm a I'm a Twitch streamer. Who knows what I'm doing next week? Yeah, I love it. Um, cool. Well, we'll we'll raid you after this then. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you so much Thank for you. the preemptive raid. Uh, you're kind. so welcome. <laughs> um, Jesse, is there anything you wanna you wanna say? Uh, Before tomorrow. We, hey. Oh yeah. Away? By the way. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for hanging out with us and letting us ramble mostly at you. Um, <laughs> it means the world to us. Thank you. Awesome. Um, this was really nice. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. But uh, hey, if you are, if you want me to finally stop talking about Final Fantasy, I think tomorrow <laughs> we're going to get to the end, hopefully, and I will not have to talk about it anymore. I just want to beat the game. It's been three weeks. <laughs> I can't. It, it, I'm 80 hours in. How is it possible? So tune in tomorrow. I don't know, maybe like 11 a.m., 12, something like that in the morning, and we'll, we'll play. And then I'll be done. And also go watch all my other 80 podcasts like Chaluminati and Cox and Crendor. And literally right after this, we have to film more episodes of our old Star Wars books podcast. Uh, so I love that one. Tune in, kids. Thanks so much. Yeah. Dodger, what are you doing? Uh, I've, I've been doing more cult of the lamb again. Cause I didn't really get to do as much with, um, with that when the DLC came out. Um, so I finally am able to put everybody in cute outfits, which is the real end game <laughs> for me. So finally got there today. I was very delighted. Uh, found out a little too late that you can customize the colors of all the outfits. So, so now I have to go back and do that and it's a whole mess. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, the, uh, cult of the lamb stuff has been really fun. So I'm going to keep doing a little bit of that. We're still trying to finish banishers. That's my white whale currently. So yeah, that's what's going on with me. Uh, and Hey everybody, if you enjoyed geek enders, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to watch the VOD later, it will not be here. It's going to be on youtube.com slash Jesse Cox. That's where all of the geek enders -z -z are. Uh, and you can also find us on, on podcast sites and things like that. Uh, but if you want to watch us again in the future, we'll be here every Friday. So, so come see us next time and take care of yourselves. Enjoy your weekend. So Bye long. Now. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. You know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the geekenders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on stream and shout. It's Jesse
Jesse and Dodger. So give them a follow, number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt.